What's going on everybody? It's Eric Ray with the back here and in today's video I'm gonna be showing you three important tips you need on defense in Madden 19 You guys know that a lot of times I like to kind of compile tips together like pro tips or just tips that aren't You know the average Madden player doesn't know and today I'm gonna go over three very important ones for defense to help you You know obviously get better on defense keep your opponents out of the end zone a little bit more often and win more games so the first tip we're going to cover today is something that I covered at the very beginning of the year, but I definitely wanted to rehash this one because so many new people are on the channel. So many new people just got the game, uh, you know, for Christmas. So this is an important tip that a lot of people still don't know, and that's going to be using QB spies in pass coverage. Now, most people know of a QB spy as, you know, something that spies the quarterback. It keeps fast guys from running around. Guys like, you know, the Michael Vicks of the world, the Lamar Jackson of the world, this QB spy keeps them from being able to run around and get extra yards with their feet. But what a lot of people don't know is QB spies, especially this year, can be used in coverage in Madden to help you not only bat the ball down, but get a lot of interceptions. So, how to put a guy in a QB spy. You want to usually put a defensive lineman in a QB spy because it works best when you do that. So you press A or X and then left on the right stick. So if you're on Xbox, you press A and then left on the right stick. If you're on PlayStation, you press X and then left on the right stick. Now, for this example here, I'm going to go ahead and just drop Sean Lee out of the play just to show you. What we want to look at here is Mike Wallace's route. Now notice how deep this route is is running this spy more times than not is going to be is going to jump up and be able to get his hands on this ball sometimes intercept it sometimes it's, you know he's going to drop it because he is a defensive lineman uh but the great thing about this is and there he goes he picks it off it looks like mike wallace is wide open and the average person that sees that is going to throw that ball watch how technically mike wallace is wide open and then i'm even further back with uh wince here so I'm giving, you know, myself room to, you know, put this ball over the defender's head. But if you look where Mike Wallace is as compared to the defensive uh, lineman here, I mean, he's almost 10 yards behind him, about 8 yards behind him. I mean, in the NFL, that's wide open. Mike Wallace is wide open. I mean, look, look at all the space. But what happens here is that spy is going to jump up and it's going to lurk this every time. Sometimes he'll drop it, but sometimes you'll get a pick. And then some people might be thinking, well, what if you kind of touch past it or lobbed it over his head? Well, the problem with that is you got Jalen Smith right here. If you try to throw a touch pass or some type of a lob pass, that's going to put the ball in the air longer. That's going to give somebody like Jalen Smith or whatever linebackers here time to close on this, make a play on the ball for a swat or, you know, lay a hit stick as soon as the receiver gets the ball. So you can't really do that. You have to bullet the pass in order to fit it into the window, but the spy takes it away. And you might be thinking, well... There's no way that that's consistent, but it is consistent. A good majority of the time, this guy is going to jump up and get his hands, you know, on the ball. Okay, there he dropped it. Like I said, again, he's going to drop it because he's not a cornerback. I mean, even cor cornerbacks and safeties drop the ball a ton. They're not wide receivers, so you can't expect defensive linemen to not drop the ball. But just getting his hands on the ball is, you know, is good. And you see there, he didn't get his hands on the ball. Linebacker came up, made a good play for us. But a, a good 80 to 90 percent of the time, they're going to at least get their hands on the ball. And any time that you put your hands on the ball, that's still a win for the defense. Because, I mean, especially if that's a third or fourth down, even if it's incomplete, you're either turning it over on downs or you're putting your opponent, in, you know, in a situation where they have to punt or they have to try to go for it on a fourth down. And then every once in a while, you get a pick. I mean, that's a that's in Madden. Anytime you get a, a turnover, it's, that's game changing because there's only so many possessions you get in a typical Madden game. Now. Guys like J.J. Watt really dominate with this. Why? Because they're huge. They're super tall, and guys like J.J. Watt actually have good hands. So if you play in Mutt or if you play with the Texans, you put J.J. Watt in a spy for the majority of the game, you're almost guaranteed to get one pick. And another thing that's good is, you know, when people like to throw short routes, like, you know, short end routes or drags over the middle, I mean, they kind of get in the way of that, and it makes you have to wait longer to deliver passes, and if you're sending a blitz or you have, you know, you get a good block shed, you know, that could be the difference between a sack, you know, or, or completing the ball, because right here, typically, if this spy wasn't here, I'd be able to throw this ball right now, but I can't throw it, and if I did throw it, same thing's gonna happen, the, the defensive tackle or defensive end's gonna either swat it, or he's going to pick it off. So I have to actually wait now. I have to wait for him to cross. That means I have to hold the ball longer. And you see, I mean, half a second longer and Tyrone Crawford here was going to get a sack on me. And that's just, that, that little spy, what that did was make the QB hold the ball longer. So definitely use QB spies in the game. 
you know, look at your guys on the defensive line. Look at your tall guys and your guys that have the best catch. If you got a guy that's 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", has decent hands, drop him in a spy most of the game. You don't have to do it every play, but do it, you know, pretty often, and you're going to find yourself getting a lot more stops. Now, the second tip we're going to go over here is a, it's a shading tip, and it's going to be you, the use of hard flats. So, in Madden... The three most popular covered shells typically are cover three, cover two, and cover four. Most people don't really play man. Most people don't play a lot of cover six and more exotic coverages, right? Cover three is one of the main ones people run. But when a lot of people run cover three, they leave the curl flats on the field. The curl flat is, you see, the safety here is in a curl flat, the purple zone. And the, uh, the, the nickelback here, Lewis, is in a purple zone. Or sometimes they'll put cloud flats on the field here because... Basically, if you play a cloud flat or if you play those purple curl flats, what most people do in their mind when they're doing that is they're saying, I want to watch out for the deep routes. I want to watch out for routes like corner routes and deep crossing routes. And I'm willing to give up the short stuff because if I make my opponent kind of have to dink and dunk me down the field, you know, that's more chances for him to mess up, for me to cause a fumble, for him to, you know, make a bad read. And that's true, and that's a, a, not a bad way to play. But the reason you should use... Hard, flat, I mean, hard flats in this game more often is because here's an example okay we're playing cloud flats so we're saying we're trying to stop a route like this deep cross to wallace we see that we have a cloud flat back here and what a cloud flat is supposed to do is it's supposed to kind of play this area of the field same for a purple zone it's supposed to play that area of the field where mike wallace is going but what's going to happen is Mike Wallace is going to get wide open because in Madden, especially this year, now, of course, we got hit with a block shit, but we're going to go to the replay. You'll see Mike Wallace is wide open for e for easy catch. If we had a half second longer, we were going to complete it because what happens here is a lot of times these cloud flats kind of get sucked down or they kind of just play in a no man's land area. If you've played Madden, you know things like deep crossing routes. I mean, they're, look, he's putting his hand up because he's just wide open. There's nothing that really defends these deep crossing routes or deep, deep corner routes. There's nothing that defends these type of routes. Here, we'll go ahead and we'll leave the purple zones on the field. So, again, you're thinking the purple zone is going to defend these deep routes in the field. That's why you leave them there. You're saying, I'm going to make them go short, but it's still open because nothing defends these deep routes. So... The problem is you're leaving the deep routes open, but now you're also leaving the short routes open by running these type of coverages. Because if I have Ertz or just anybody on a drag here, doesn't matter who I have on a drag, I'm dinking it down underneath, and you see I'm getting 9 yards, 10 yards on a drag route there. Or, you know, if I'm, you know, in a, whatever, if I have like Mike Wallace here on like a whip route or something, and I'm leaving the purples or the cloud flats on the field, I'm thinking like, all right, I'm going to stop, you know, deep routes, but actually, you know, I, I can get underneath for five yards on, on a flat route, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with giving up five yards to a flat route, but the problem is you're giving up anywhere from five to ten yards underneath, but you're still giving up the big routes that you're hoping to take away by playing cloud flats or curl flats. So what you want to do is you want to shade down and play hard flats. To do that, you press wire triangle and then down on the right stick. Now, what this ensures is that at least all the short stuff is gone because the deep routes, you have to manually guard them any way to take them away. So you might as well play play to the strengths of, of how the game is kind of coded, I guess. If you know that the deep routes have to be manually guarded anyway, if the if playing the deeper zones aren't going to take them away, then play, the, then play those zones short because at least then the computer will take away the short stuff for you. So for example, now, if I try to throw this same drag to Zach Ertz that we got 10 yards on before, they're clamping down on it now, and you see he got three yards there. And in some cases, if you have a higher rated defensive backs or defenders there, they'll actually jump it for interceptions, and that can go the other way. Same thing here. We're going to go ahead and play underneath, and we'll do the same little thing where I tried to throw the little whip route last time to Wallace, and we got about five yards, which wasn't crazy, but still, it's five yards. That's not going to be there now. We try to throw it for five yards now, and you see the DB is all over it, and that honestly should have been a pick, but he jarred the ball loose. So by playing hard flats, we're taking away the short stuff, but we can still take, we have to take away the deep stuff manually anyway. So that's kind of the thought process. So like right here, this is like kind of a popular little flood concept. So what I would do here, if I'm um, playing hard flats here, right, is I would kind of stay low and try to bait the deep route because I know that eventually I have to go take the deep route myself. So I would kind of like stay low, like I'm going to play the drag and then I would run deep 
to get on this route here. And what that does, we're going to go to the replay, I'm going to show you what that does here, is because we, you know, we, we, you play people in Madden, you kind of get a feel for how they like to play. When they come out in these certain formations, you know they're going to throw a deep cross or they're going to throw a deep corner route. So what I do here with Sean Lee is I stay, I stay low just momentarily so that he thinks that this drag can't be thrown. Because right here, we're playing underneath Jalen Smith, can't throw the drag yet. You have a window right here where you can throw it, but when people come out in these type of plays, they're thinking deep. And you're saying, yes, I could throw it right now. I could throw it right now to Mike Wallace. But what most people do is they wait for that route to develop later because that's what gives you the biggest potential gain. So they're already kind of locked in on that deeper route. So I would stay low briefly, right? Make him think that the drag isn't going to happen. And then last second, I bail out. So if he throws it now and you're thinking, well, he's still kind of open right now if he would throw it. But with the way this game is, they throw the ball, you hold Y, you jump up in the air, you get crazy animations on defense, and you can pick balls off even when you're, you know, five yards underneath them. But not not even that. You, you don't even have to bait it, right, if you want. You can still give up the drag for minimum gain if you want, or you can get on a, a linebacker on the opposite side. So, like, for example, now, now I can kind of just run with him the entire way. And that's not open, but you see that the drag is also not open either. The drag was not open because we played the hard flash we'll go back to the replay one more time and then we'll jump into the third and final tip which is going to be a quick one so you see here with, with uh with Jalen Smith I stay low for just a split second and then now I'm running deep because if you throw this right here we already got Sean Lee he's going to come down if you wait a little too long we have this guy sitting in the flat waiting for it and that's typically when most people throw drags they they like to let the routes cross a lot of people don't throw it right over the middle they're kind of accustomed to waiting for it to cross. So now you can't throw this because this is kind of, you know, bracketed between these two defenders. But I'm all over the deep cross that I have to manually guard anyway. Because no matter what I do that's going to be open, I have to manually take that away. So basically moral of the story is when you play cover three or cover four, you always want to shade down and play hard flats. I don't recommend it in cover two because cover two you leave a lot of stuff exposed if you try to do it in cover two. So cover two if you want to play bend don't break I, I, and, you know, give up the short stuff. Cover 2 is a better cover to do that, but if you're playing cover 3 and cover 4, always shade down because at least you know you're guaranteed to, for the most part, take away the short stuff, the flat routes, the drags, and you manually take away the deep stuff yourself because you have to anyway with how this game is programmed. Third and final tip, I know the second one was kind of long-winded, but I just I like to really make sure you guys understand what's going on. Third and final tip is how to completely stuff the QB sneak. I get asked this question tons. How do you stuff the QB sneak? How do you stuff the QB sneak? Because a lot of people think it's an automatic, you know, half a yard to a yard every time. Anytime it's fourth and one or fourth and inches or third and one, people are like, you know, it's just automatic. It's not. Very easy to stop. You go to goal line, um, 5-3-3. So there's two goal lines. It's 5-3-3 and it's 4-5-2. Uh, you go to goal line, 5-3-3. It's the first one. You scroll to the play, gaps all completely easy to stop this you pinch your line and you crash them down so you press lb or l1 down on the left stick and then you press lb or l1 again and this time you press down on the right stick and the qb sneak is stuffed just like this every single time i don't care who your qb is i don't care if it's cam newton i don't care if it's michael vick i don't care how big he is i don't care if he's ben roethlisberger he's not gonna fall forward i you rarely see that happen he will get stuffed for no gain every time so if it's fourth and inches your opponent comes out and he thinks oh this is automatic nope it's not you just turn the ball over and got the ball back and the beauty about this is a lot of times people you know the first time you hit them with this they think oh it was a fluke right so it might be third and one you stuff it and then they're like, oh, that was just a fluke. He just got a lucky, you know, guy just came through. So now it's fourth and one. They try to do it again, get stuffed again. And that's huge because, like I said earlier in the video, possessions in Madden are limited. Most Madden games, you might get four possessions on offense, and maybe five if you're lucky. Some games, you only get three uh, because, the, you know, the quarters are short depending on what type of game you're playing. If you guarantee a stop on something like this, you just put yourself in a really good position to win because you just you took away a possession from them and you just gave yourself an extra possession. So you can see literally every single time this is stuffed. Now, an added extra to this is if you want to stop the toss, you just kind of want to go ahead and slide the guy, you know, the outside guy out just in case they toss. And then you always want to play for the toss of your middle linebacker because you don't need you don't need the uh, the middle linebacker to stop the sneak. So every time the ball snapped, you just want to run outside like this. Because if the toss is there, you're going to be out there to defend it. And it does shut down the toss every time as well. Because what happens is you got this guy who's going to 
protect the edge on the outside and in the event of a toss and you see me right here I'm running over with this linebacker I would be protecting the cutback lane here so anytime you see goal line you just always want to play the toss with your guy automatically because you know that every single time your defensive line is taking care of the sneak for literally you can see the ball is on the 30 the ball does not get past the 30 so even in an inches situation you're still going to have them get no gain and you're I mean if it's an inches situation they're they're not converting so that's a really huge tip that a lot of people still don't know the QB sneak is not automatic that is how you stop it and that is it for today's video I really hope you guys enjoyed this and found it helpful if you did as always just drop a like comment subscribe and I will see you guys next time